Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2021 film The Power, and it's a Shutter exclusive, and it is coming to Shutter on Thursday, April 8th. And because it's not on Shutter yet, uh, this will be a no spoiler review, just so everyone knows. Um, there will be, although there's always this disclaimer that thematically speaking, I will talk about some underlying themes with the film, but I won't really tell you the events of the film, other than just a very quick synopsis, like one or two sentences about, this is what it's broadly about. I don't get much into it. I certainly don't ruin it as much as trailers do. That is for sure. So this film is written and directed by Corinna Faith, uh, which by the way, pretty good writing and I really like the directing in this, cinematography directing. It looks really good, and I'll talk some more about some of the other things that look good about the film, but uh, yeah. Um, Rose Williams plays the main character of Val in this film, and she does an excellent job. Now, this is a role that is not easy. It's a pretty demanding role, and I think she does an excellent, excellent job with it. And I looked at her IMDb credits, and I didn't really see anything that I was really all that familiar with. Um, she had a few, I think like two other feature films or something and some TV shows, but she might be a person to watch because her performance in this was very good and it really does stand out. So like I said, once again, coming to Shudder on Thursday, April 8th. Now the synopsis of this is it takes place in 1973 Britain. So yes, people have British accents. Uh, I know some people have problems with, with accents of different types and, you know, hearing, uh, what people have to say based off that, but I'd say just put on subtitles if that's a problem for you. So this takes place in 1973 Britain where they are experiencing some issues with blackouts uh, in, I think it's set in London. It might not be specifically, don't quote me on that, but it's in Britain. Uh, they're experiencing some blackouts uh, due to uh, some hardships that people are going through, the towns are going through, and it takes place in a hospital where Val, the main character, is a new nurse, and she's going to start her job, and she runs into some problems with, you know, pretty much everyone who works there, uh, and for that reason, it's pretty relatable, as it has to do with a new person on a job versus all the people who have been there for a while, who are pretty, you know, seasoned, and therefore pretty negative about the job and about things in general. But anyway, um, yeah, and so just, it's about that, and then things start happening. So I do need to give you a disclaimer on my feelings on this film. I did like this film. I did enjoy a once-through of the film. I probably wouldn't watch it again, but the main reason for that being that it's not my type of subgenre, it fits into a subgenre of horror that I'm not a huge fan of, which is like ghost paranormal type stuff. Uh, but it was good enough for someone who's not in that subgenre to realize, oh, this is pretty well done. So I do know there will be people out there who really love this film, and I would say that if you are into paranormal slash, you know, ghost films, um, you should probably just give it a shot, because you may end up loving this, or, or at least I would say you'd end up liking it, most likely. So anyway... Immediately, the film looks really good, and the camera work is very smooth, very engaging. It is very refreshing, because I have watched a bunch of films lately that have a lot of shaky camera issues. This film does not have that, so thank you very much, Corinna Faith. Thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, it's there's some pretty inspired directing in this. There's some really cool shots. Like I said, the camera movement is very smooth, very engaging, very nice, so visually, it looks really nice. Also, the use of dark and light in this film, because obviously with what I said in the synopsis about there being power outages, uh, that comes into play, obviously. So the use of dark versus light is done really well. There's a tendency in films to not light things enough so that even when it's dark, people can't see enough of what they should really be seeing. This film does not have that problem, so kudos to them for getting their lighting straight. That's wonderful. Uh, there's an overall feeling of stress in the film uh, because of the setup with being in a poor area in the town, the blackouts that are happening, so you kind of never, you feel like you never really know when it's going to happen in the film, and the strict expectations and parameters for Val's job because you start with her going to the job, so, you know, she's getting introduced to everyone, and I feel like it's written and acted well to a point where it's, it's conveyed to the viewer that, like, this is a stressful situation, not just because of her specific job and what 
parameters are there and what expectations are given are given to her, but also just the whole you know world situation at that point. And on top of that, the blackouts and the fact that she's in a nursing position, which can be very much high stress and depressing because of the type of people that she has to take care of. Because I think I think what ends up happening is she's she's uh, uh, involved in the intensive care ward, which obviously is probably the most depressing place to be in a hospital. So yeah. Val is painted as a very sympathetic character in a way that really does endear the viewer to her, which I think really, really helps when things start to really happen. Because you create kind of that connection with her character of, wow, you know, I like this person. She's a very likable person. She wants to do the right thing. She's very positive. She's running up against all this negativity right now. And she's trying to be like the good force at this job. And so, yeah, you have that immediate connection with her of she's a good one uh, and I hope she does well. So when things start to happen, you do start to fear for her. And so I like that. They did a good job of developing her character and making her likable immediately. Uh, there's an awesome shot in this where a door with a window ends up closing and you see Val's reflection in it. And when it's showing her reflection in it, it overlays her face on the face on a poster that's on a wall on the other side of the door. It looks really cool. That's one of those really inspired shots I was talking about. Looks really cool. And then that same type of trick, I guess, camera trick, is used later in the film in a bit of a different way that I think is really cool as well. So both times that that happens, looks really good. Uh, I'm a fan. There's a good comparison of fresh-faced Val and her attitude about nursing and those who have been there for a while. You know, they're very surly people. They're very haggard. Uh, and they're not very nice to her. Not very nice to her. I know a lot of people can probably connect with stuff like that. I know I've gone to jobs where I come in. I'm like, this is a new job. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do a good job here. Be positive. And you are met with people who are just like, oh, well, you know, give it enough time and you're going to hate this place. Or they just think everything's super negative and terrible. So I think most people have kind of been in that situation at some point in their life. So it's relatable too. So not only is Val likable, but her situation is relatable. The sound design is quite good for this film and it plays a very important role in building and maintaining the atmosphere for this, which is dark, creepy, and gives you this feeling that anything could kind of happen at any time. So it maintains good tension. Another thing at play with this is that the music is very well restrained. Uh, great job with the soundtrack. There's a tendency for films to go overboard with music and beat you over the head with it. I like it more when it's like in this film where it's more restrained and even stretches where there's no music at all, which helps you kind of be alone with your feelings and thoughts, take in the atmosphere and ambiance, feel how you want to feel about it or feel confused about how you should feel about it. And it really helps with focusing then on the sound design, which for a film like this in particular, for this subgenre, really, really helps. So they did a really good job with the sound design, did a really good job with a restrained score. So nice work on that. So I think people are kind of hearing from me basically that from a technical standpoint, they really brought things together quite well with this film. The score, oh, I literally just said that, I'm sorry. <laughs> The filming location is very drab and creepy, so they did a good job picking the filming location. It fits in perfectly with the atmosphere. I'm a fan of it. The use of darkness and light, already talked about that, executed very well. About 50 minutes into the film is where the film kind of takes a significant... There's one event that happens at about 50 minutes in that really kind of accelerates things and really kind of ups the ante and lets you know that things are really about to, to start to get going. Um, so just know that I'm just giving that as, as like an expectation. So if you feel like it's going kind of slow at first, it is a little bit slow until it gets to that point, but their character building during that time up to the 50 minute mark. And, um, I was fine with it. There's a line of dialogue at the very end of the film that tells you the significance of the title. It's not done in a corny or stupid way because that definitely happens in a lot of films where they're just like, they're like, and then that is the power and then they look at the screen it's not anything like that but it's rolled into a bit of dialogue that gives you this kind of moment of ah okay i see exactly what they were going for here and this title definitely makes sense and it fits 
The ending works for the overall story in my opinion, but I was hoping for them to go a little bit bigger, to go a little bit more boldly in the very end. Like I said, it works for the overall story and the message, and it is a good message, and it's well crafted in my opinion, but I kind of just wanted more. I wanted more from the scares. I wanted more from the gore. I wanted more from just like a bigger ending because it really felt like it was working towards that. And, you know, maybe some people would be totally good with that and be like, oh, it was a perfectly fine ending. But I, I just wanted more. It left me wanting at the end. But I did get the point to it. And I did like, you know, kind of the underlying themes and all that. So this is a, uh, I already talked about being relatable. Uh, there seems to be an equating of certain paranormal happenings to sexual assault and those around who can, who are in a position to actually help, but actually just end up becoming very dismissive of the whole situation. Being those people who are like, Ugh, I don't want to touch this. This doesn't really concern me. Or just being the doubters. The people who are saying, well, I don't know if you really, if it really is what you think it is one of those situations. It's been in film before. I think it's crafted in a good way in this film, and it stays very much kind of subtextual uh, in certain ways until the end. I think it's a little less so. So some people might not like that, that it kind of becomes less sub subtext at the end, but I was, you know, I thought, I thought it was fine. Other than just at the end wanting that bigger ending, it was fine. Uh, there's another point in this about how you view people versus who they really are. Once again, that's another thing that shows up in film a lot, but I think it was done interestingly enough in this one, so I'm down. Uh, now, like I said, it's not my subgenre. I know there are going to be some people who love this. I know there will be some people who hate this film too, actually. So I'm kind of more in the middle-ish, but I realize it's a good film. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a solid three star rating. I think it's worth watching for sure. And as I always say, every film was worth watching at least once. So you can figure out for yourself what you're feeling about it is. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you in between? And on that note, let's talk about that. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you in between? Put some comments down here. We can go ahead and do spoilers in the comments. Everyone, just so you know, spoilers in the comments. And uh, let's talk. If you had... If you had anything saying, well, I thought this film was getting at this here, um, let's have a back and forth. Let's talk about it. But anyway, do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button. It literally takes you a second. It means a lot to me. Uh, I really am thankful whenever anyone subscribes because that's the way we grow this nerdy horror community that I'm trying to build here for the sake of having awesome nerdy horror conversation because where I live... I literally don't have that many people to talk to about horror, and that's why I started this channel, because I want to talk about horror and be nerdy about it and really dive into it, as you can tell by my reviews. But anyway, thank you very much if you do that. Uh, also, if you could just hit the notification bell button, because that way you'll know whenever any of my new videos go up, whether it's one of these reviews or unboxing, haul video, whatever. But anyway, I really do appreciate you taking your time to check this video out, and until next time, keep it brutal.